Welcome back to the neighborhood, boys and girls. Our next guest is Tanae Hoffman from Real Broker LLC. Welcome to the neighborhood tonight. Thank you. Awesome to have you here. Nice, uh, awesome to be here. We like to talk about the personal stuff on, okay. on the show a little bit. I mean, everybody knows business, everybody knows the realtor stuff. So, talk a little bit about your journey pre real estate and how you got into the real estate business because most people don't say in second grade when I grow up I want to be a realtor you know so give us a little bit of back history of what made tonight you know all right so originally I was in the medical field so I was, okay. was a medical assistant for a while then I did medical coding then I had my daughter uh, she's four now mm -hmm. and I was home for a while then I went back into medical coding what got me into real estate was basically my husband turned our first house into a flip with okay. our first rental property. And he's like, I want to do this. So I'm like, okay, combine our gifts. You can do the handyman stuff, stuff that I do not do. Mm -hmm. And I'll do the real estate. Fast forward about a year and a half ago, I got my, had nothing to do with his flipping properties. I did my first deal helping a couple buy their first house and I caught the bug and loved it ever since. There you go. I've been doing it part time, and actually, recently I quit my day job, and now I'm doing it full time. Full time. Yes. You jumped in feet first, yes. right? <laughs> All right. And what do you think is the most rewarding part of the job? The look on people's faces when I tell them you got the house. Like that is the best part of it. Like I love making people's dreams come true, and I love the idea of having. Working with families, giving them a home, working with couples, starting out their lives. Because actually, I have a closing next week with a young couple. Okay. They're engaged, and they were look they're moving from California. Mm. So they, because the husband's in the military, so he got stationed out here. Right. And they're getting their first house, and they're super excited to get started. They were looking for a long time, and before they got to me, right. And the first house I showed them. I'm like, all right, let's make a gamble and put an offer in, and it got accepted. And they got it. VA loan? Yep, VA oh, loan. That's awesome. It's good to hear that VA loans are being accepted because I know for a while it they was weren't. tough to get a VA loan accepted. And I told them, and they knew that too, and I'm like, because you don't have to put anything down, because you, there's so many strict guidelines for mm -hmm. them to get it approved, and we've hit a couple of hiccups. When they first accepted the offer, they got a secondary offer a little bit higher, I wasn't 100% comfortable with going a little bit higher because of the appraisals we problems mm -hmm. we've had lately. Right. But I told him, like, look, you have a little money safe. We'll put that down as a deposit. I will, if it's because I love this couple and it was such, they love this house so much. I'm like, I will gamble part of my commission in order for you to get this house. So if there's a gap, you have your money, I have my money, and we will put it together to help oh, it appraise. That's awesome. And what ended up happening was it appraised over. Yeah. So I gave that phone call was even better. So their loan officer called me, and I'm like, guess what's the good news? Right. That's <laughs> awesome. Now, so you're newer at this, so you really kind of jumped in when things were really crazy. You know, when it was yes. <laughs> 40 people at an open house and multiple offers and stuff. So now as things start to slow down, is it more enjoyable is it more fear that you might go in full force at the wrong time when things are slowing like where, where's, where's I kind of see it as more of an opportunity for me to dive into like marketing myself and okay. getting to know people in my neighbor the neighborhoods I work in a lot of the times like it's yes it'll slow down in some aspects but at the same time it frees up time for me to Say hi to low because businesses I've been meaning to talk to or right. market myself with videos like this. Like right. that's basically my next objective for the next couple of weeks is basically be in everybody's faces as the mommy realtor. I like <laughs> it. I like it. I, I don't think that people realize how much of business is that. You know, mm -hmm. like when most times when people choose, especially in real estate and mortgage and these things where the products are kind of comparable, when people choose you, they choose you because they like you or mm -hmm. because they connect to you or because, you know, you put a video out there about your childhood or mm -hmm. about your dreams or about whatever and, and you connect them on a level because really, I mean, yes, there are better realtors than others and yes, there are things, but for the most part, the product is, is very similar. So if they don't know you mm -hmm. you know if you don't sell yourself it's really hard to to, to make an impression on people exactly and that with me it's, i want to go with the, the stick of mommy realtor because my daughter is a big part of what i do because sure. the way i got her to understand when mommy's like working late or not home for something she goes 
what does mommy work for so we can go to Mickey's house? So right. That's, that's her. And she loves helping me. So if I, when I've done events and stuff, she likes wearing her real shirt and helping mommy hand out flyers or little um, promotional material. Mm-hmm. So she's definitely going to be incorporated because she likes being a part of what I'm doing. Yeah. And you're already pretty active, even though it's part time. Like I know that you've done uh, a bunch of different events mm-hmm. with, with Sydney, who works here. You're, you're like, you know, you'll go to flea markets, you'll go to craft fairs, you'll go to. I wherever. like people. Right. Like I like the face to face interaction with sure. people. I used to be really shy, which nobody believes when I tell them that. But I, I was going to be say what? Really shy and actually. What, for like a minute you were really shy? Come on. Real estate <laughs> actually got me out of my shell. And okay. the fact that I have to meet so many different people from so many different backgrounds in different parts of their lives. It actually has helped me become more confident to be able to speak to people and work with people. And it's, it actually has helped me help them more. Nice. Nice. Now, do you tend to gravitate towards a specific type of customer? Like, do you tend to gravitate more towards the first time home buyer, more towards the step up buyer, more towards the investor? Is there is there someone that you tend to gravitate towards? I tend to gravitate towards the people that are the more of the families trying to look for a a nice place to live to raise a raise their family and to have. To be away from the hustle bustle being in the city, I've okay. noticed that a lot of the clients that that seem to be attracted to me are people that are trying to get away from everything. Mm-hmm. Like the the small town feel where everybody knows your name, kind of the cheers vibe. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that the the and it's always couples that work with, and it's if they have kids, it's the best because I interact with the kids too and make them part of the process. Like, sure. hey, do you see yourself in this being your room? All right, if it's most bedroom, which bedroom's going to be yours, and which one's going to be mommy's and mommy and daddy's. That's so awesome. I like making them a part of it too whenever they have to bring them. So <laughs> and what has been the most difficult transition or the the biggest hurdle that you've had to overcome coming from that medical field to to doing this full time? I guess the biggest hurdle for me had has been I've always had a 9 to 5 job. So having my own schedule has made me get more focused like make myself okay Yes, you can wake up when you want to, but that's not going to work. Right. You have to get up, get get going, have a calendar of things to do. It's like I can't hold myself a lot more accountable now. Mm-hmm. So it's like if something doesn't get done, I can't blame anybody else but myself. And it, and I hate not being busy, and I hate having a long to-do list with nothing cratch, scratched off. So it's like, okay, that's my kicking the butt. I'm like, all right, what have you accomplished today? Yeah. Nothing, that's not good. <laughs> it takes a whole lot of self-discipline to... To be your own boss because that's what you are when you're mm-hmm. a realtor. You know, I mean, you're you might work for a company, you might have a manager or whatever, but you're you're self employed. You're mm-hmm. your own boss. You have to do it. So that's awesome. And what do you think your biggest attribute or or strong point is that's going to allow you to really be super successful? What do you what do you think is going to stand out the most? One thing people keep saying, and it's funny, my hairdresser said this to me today too. Is my personality like she said? Your smile always. I, I always think we're gonna have a good day when I see you at the door coming in because your smile makes my day. And I'm like, I'll stop. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I guess my personality, my energy, has attracted a lot of people. In my honesty with people, I don't try to sugarcoat stuff. But at the same time, I'm not like beautifully honest for no reason. Like, right. I'll be the first one to say, look, I don't think this is a good idea. You don't have to listen to me. Sure. It's okay. I, you're not hurting my feelings, but I would do it this way. Mm-hmm. Like I put it when I work with someone, I'm like, I'm gonna be honest with you whether you like it or not. So if we go into a place where I don't see you in it, I'll tell you that. But if you like it, I'll still work with it. Sure, sure. But at least you don't have to worry about someone coming to you later on saying, "Why didn't you tell me?" And I put yeah. it out all out there, at, yeah, <laughs> up front. You free yourself right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And uh, all right, so let's talk a little bit about the future. We, we talked about the past. Let's talk about the future. In let's go to, uh, geez, we're already in September. I feel oh so. God, old. Oh, oh my gosh, let's go to September of twenty twenty four. Tell me some things that you have on your accomplishment list that you want to accomplish within the next two years. Well, definitely take my daughter to Mickey's house because that's my promise to her. Okay. Um, get get myself out of debt. Okay. Because a lot of this. With pandemic affected me too, mm-hmm. so getting out of that, um, being able to have my husband be a part of it too, like 
we are going we want to get more investment properties so get more into that and put more and more families into homes okay Nice. Have you ever had the chance to mentor any newer agents? Have you worked with anyone who's been like super, super new where you've been able to give back some of the stuff that has been given to you as an agent already? Not super new, but I'm definitely in my company, definitely ones for collaboration. So I, the people in my company and the team I was on mm -hmm. always used to come to me and like, look, I need your help with something. I'm more than willing to help people. Like some people aren't the most tech savvy. I help them with that or figuring out promotional things. Okay, this, web, this website's good. I've learned this one's not too well quality. Like I'm always willing to share the information I've learned with other people. So do you see yourself in the future as being like a team leader? and yes. having? I would like to have my own team and be a broker. I'm okay. too young to do it now. I've got two more years before I could take the test, but okay. I'm definitely willing to do that. Nice, nice. All right, so we're going to finish off with a personal question. Anyone throughout history, you could have a 30-minute interview with anyone, whether they're alive or dead. It could be famous, family member, whatever. You get to pick one person to sit down and interview for 30 minutes. Who, who would it be? Robin Williams. Robin Williams? That, he, I've always been inspired by him. Like his humor, the way he brought laughter to everyone. And I, his passing really got to me. But I have actually this art piece with a quote from him that was, um, I have in my office. I can't quote it verbatim, but he is, all, I've always loved Robin Williams. Right. And what, so give me, give me what you, what's one question you would want to ask? I guess the one question I've always asked him is, how do you, how does your mind always come up with the right joke to say? Like, how do you always be so quick with it with mm -hmm. it and quickly come up with something to, um, people have people laughing out of their chairs. Like I, I never understood how I could be so quick with that. Yeah, he he was amazing. Even back like you're you're probably young for it, but when he first first started, he was on Happy Days as Mork. And then he turned it to Mark and, and Mindy. Then he went I've to seen Mork and Mindy, and he went through there. But just like from that from that day, even like all the different movies, whether it was Mrs. Doubtfire or mm -hmm. Patch Adams or whatever. I loved Patch Adams. Yeah, I loved Patch Adams. Such and his Insider Actors Studio interview i have watched that 20 times and i crack up every time yeah and it's just him being him yeah. riffing off at every little thing his live stuff his live comedy was great and it, it it's it's strange i don't know what the right word is strange weird whatever it's so awkward to know that someone like that was unhappy and depressed you know what i mean like it's crazy that mm -hmm. he was always so make everyone else laugh but deep inside mm -hmm. he was sad you know and what I mean? like i relate to him a lot because i've always suffered with anxiety and depression myself so it's like to see someone like him have the same struggles as tragic would happen to him but it's like it makes it me feel like okay you're not alone like right you can have all this over on the surface and make everybody else happy but you still have to take care of yourself sure awesome Tonight, thank you so much thank for coming so much in for tonight. Me. Good luck. Thank we'll you. be back next week with another episode of Mr. Mortgage's Neighborhood.